friends and welcome back to another video where I'm sharing my TTC journey after being diagnosed with PCOS and endometriosis and this week I just kind of thought I would pick up my camera throughout the week showing you the different processes that I'm having to go through to try and get my period back as normal and as well dealing with like doctors and body image issues because day to day lots of different things go on to try and manage the situation and this week we've got quite a lot of things coming up so I thought it'd just be a really good idea for me to pick up the camera and do kind of like a vlog style video to catch you up on everything that's been going on with us and this morning I decided to get up and weigh myself for the first time in a while. So I know that recently having to reduce my training and I've just been sort of trying to do more like intuitive eating to try and understand my PCOS, it has led to some weight gain and yeah I have been avoiding sort of like weighing myself or doing anything like that but I made the decision to weigh myself to see where I'm up to and to also do like a little bit of a picture video check-in so I will insert this footage here. Now I know that I am very lucky, I have what is classed as lean PCOS which means that I don't struggle with weight gain as such, however previously I was somebody who was so active, I was in the gym five times a week, I dieted and I could get the weight off easily and I was lean and as soon as that all had to stop I had to reduce my training because of the endometriosis, I have slowly gained weight. So although I don't necessarily have trouble losing weight, I do gain weight quite quickly if I don't keep up with my activity and watch what I eat. So I've definitely been struggling with body image recently, a lot of my like summer clothes now that the sun's out don't fit me because I have put some weight on and I know I know it's like the least of my problems at the moment but it's definitely something that's been playing on my mind so I just decided to weigh myself do a bit of a check-in see what my body's looking like and I can start to think about how I want to train and how I want to eat to start targeting some of those areas where I have gained a little bit of weight so that was the first thing this morning I also took my temperature and this is something that I do every single day I just keep one of these little thermometers next to my bed and I just track my temperature every day to see whether it spikes, to see whether I'm ovulating. Today is Monday and according to my tracking app, it should be an ovulation day, but my temperature has stayed exactly the same. So it doesn't look like I've ovulated today. So I literally just take my temperature every day. I put my temperature into an app and now I kind of know my own body and my temperature tends to stay around 36.3, 36.4 and when I see it spike up towards like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, typically that means that my body is ovulating. So I just always keep an eye on that. I no longer do those ovulation strips. You might have seen me do those in previous videos and they just weren't accurate. So I scrapped those. We no longer do the ovulation sticks and I literally just go off my temperature and my cervical mucus. <laughs> so you're looking for like that sticky egg white consistency and that's exactly what I look for. So doesn't look like I've ovulated yet so maybe that means I'm not going to get a period this month but I'm just going to continue to track that and see how it goes. As you know I did get a period in May and it was my first one in four months or something like that. So yeah we're just trying to continue to get that cycle back and see how that goes. To help with that and try and get a better understanding I have just borrowed my mother-in-law's Kindle and I've just downloaded a book called Getting Pregnant with PCOS and it's by Claire Goodwin. It's had some really good reviews in terms of helping women like me with polycystic ovaries try and get their cycles back naturally to try and get them pregnant. So yeah, I've been trying to like, when I'm having my lunch, try and read a bit of this to get more information and yeah, trying to look at how I can figure out my root cause to try and start to get my period back naturally. Anyway, today is a big day because we are getting my husband's semen analysis results which is 
nerve-wracking but the whole time throughout this whole process of me like going to the doctors and things like that I've always trusted my gut I've always gone with my gut instinct and my gut is telling me that he's fine so although I'm a little bit nervy now because the call's in like a couple of hours I'm feeling pretty confident I think he's gonna be fine so yeah we're waiting for that it's at 10 o'clock this morning and the whole point of this was that the doctor would prescribe me Clomid to try and get me ovulated but we'll talk about that a little bit later so I'm just going to get started with work today because it is a Monday and I'll check back in with you guys later when we get his results. <sighs> Some time has passed and as you can see by the big smile on my face his results were fine. I knew they would be. But I just thought I'd quickly run through what to expect in case your husband or if you are watching this and you are male, although I know the majority of my viewers are female, just kind of what to expect. So he did the sample at home because we live close to the hospital. So it was dead easy for us to just do it at home and go and drop it off. And then we've waited about a week and a half for the results. Now what you can do is just get the doctor to send you the results and you'll just get the PDF. But I paid a little bit extra to get the doctor to ring me to actually explain the results to us. Now I have paid for this as I have most things because who knows when it would have happened on the NHS. So the cost was £200. As I say, it's a little bit less if you don't request the phone call. So the fourth thing that they said they looked at was concentration, motility, shape and anti-sperm antibody, which I'd never even heard of. But all of his results were in the normal range and some of them were like really good, like higher average, if that makes sense. So like concentration and the motility and things like that. So she said, in terms of my husband, we've got nothing to worry about, which was really good news. Um, Cause obviously if there'd been something wrong with him, then we would have definitely been looking at IVF, but because he's looking okay, it is now just concentrating on me and trying to get me better. And yeah, and then we can hopefully try starting to get pregnant at some point, maybe this year or early next year. Who knows yeah that was really exciting that is one good thing that has come out of today so i am going to check back in with you guys tomorrow because believe it or not we've got more to come <laughs> good morning my friends it is it is warm today i have to say <laughs> so yesterday we left off with positive news that my husband's analysis came back tip top which was great news so we sat down last night and had a little bit of a chat about what to do next and we have decided to not go for the Clomid at this time. We just don't think with my situation we've got the best chance of the Clomid working at the moment and you know I think I would rather have the surgery and be feeling better in myself before we move on to Clomid and you know have a really good go at trying to conceive so that was a decision that we made last night however we did make the decision to maybe try metformin for me so if you don't know metformin is a diabetes drug but it is also prescribed to women with PCOS to help them regulate their cycles and previously I said absolutely not to this I was so determined to try and do this myself, do it holistically. But I'm not saying that this, what I'm doing isn't working, but what I'm saying is maybe I could benefit from a little bit of help. So I decided to ring my doctor this morning and make an appointment to discuss this with her. And she was all for it. She was willing to, you know, give it a try. She said, for some women, it is really successful. And for others, it doesn't work. And a lot of women suffer with metformin in terms of the side effects to do with like their stomachs and things like that. But she said, we can, you know, alter the doses and we can try different forms of metformin and things like that, which all sounded fantastic. I was ready to sign up, be on board. But then she said that, it isn't something that they typically prescribe, which I was really surprised by. So of course this process is uh, never straightforward <laughs> and she's asked me to go back to my gynecologist to ask him to write her a letter in order to basically put forward a recommendation 
for me to have metformin and then she'll prescribe it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he's on board with that. The metformin was his suggestion in the first place, so I'm sure he will be, but I just don't know how long that process is going to take. Yeah, that's potentially something that we're going to give a try. It could not work, it could be disastrous, but I'm willing to give it a go alongside like what I'm already doing. So we'll see whether that works. So, it's only Tuesday and I feel like we've already been through a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> I have booked myself in for acupuncture again this week. So that's on Thursday, so I'm really looking forward to that. And it's something that really helps me to relax. So that'd be great. And obviously I'll pick up my camera again on Thursday and let you know how acupuncture goes. I did do a whole video talking about my first acupuncture experience. I'll link that down below in case you missed it. But otherwise, I'm going to love you and leave you again. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Good morning my friends, a very happy Wednesday. It is another beautiful day outside and I decided to challenge some of my PCOS weight gain body demons today and I'm wearing a summer dress so I'll show you what I'm wearing. Excuse the mess behind me but here she is. It is a really old dress so I can't link it down below. I've had this for about oh God, like eight years but it's super stretchy so it still fits. One problem that I have, and it's one of those things, isn't it? It's just a personal thing, is like endo belly. So you can see like my belly kind of sticks at the bottom and probably most people don't notice it, but I get really, really self-conscious about it. And sometimes I feel like I'm like sucking in constantly because I feel like it's there. But today I am legs out. Again, I hate my legs. No tan. I've just stuck on my summer dress and decided to you know, be a bit more confident and yeah, wear a little dress whilst it's summery. And it's so annoying because I know most people look at me and go, oh my God, like you're not fat and all that stuff. But you know, any amount of weight gain can knock your confidence. We're about to go downstairs and get some breakfast because I am hungry this morning. It's a rest day today. So I've got some things planned as well. It is a work day and I've got quite a few meetings this morning. So let's go and get some breakfast first and I'll show you one thing that I've added to my breakfast which has been game changing. Ow, scratch myself. I'm in the kitchen and I'm still living at my in-laws. We're hopefully going home in two weeks but I've just come down for some breakfast. And when I didn't know that I had PCOS, I used to snack literally every two to three hours. I was always hungry, I had to pack snacks with me and I could have breakfast and then be hungry an hour later and typically it was because I was having like oats for breakfast or cereals, mainly like carb sources but since switching to a higher fat breakfast I have found that I've been able to last longer in between meals and now I'm pretty much just trying to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. As you all know, I always have my paleo porridge if you've been watching my videos for a little while. So as always, I have got my paleo porridge, some coconut yogurt and some berries with some skinny food jam. I have not yet got bored of this. I absolutely love it. So I've been having this, but my new addition to my breakfast is a boiled egg and I literally just add a little bit of butter to my boiled egg I mash it up. And this has been a game changer in terms of like my hunger. Yesterday it was 12.30 and I was a bit like, did, did I miss lunch? Like literally this has been keeping me going. So if you are somebody with PCOS and you find that you're hungry all the time, add in another sort of like protein or higher fat source to any meal and hopefully it will tide you over a little bit longer. There we go, nice and simple, just a mashed up boiled egg with some olive spread and some salt. Yeah, I'm going to eat this and my paleo porridge and that will be my breakfast. And then I'll see you guys in a little bit for something a little bit out there. <laughs> Not tried it yet, but this afternoon is the perfect opportunity to do it. So stay tuned if you want to see what that is. I am back and I've slipped into something a little bit more revealing but don't get excited. <laughs> I have put on a pair of shorts and a crop top because I'm going to do castor oil packing. 
So this was something that was recommended by my holistic nutritionist. If you missed that video, I'll link it down below. And there is evidence to suggest that it helps with like inflammation and things like that. Specifically, if you've got fibroids, PCOS and endometriosis. So I've got the castor oil and I've got the material and I'm gonna give it a go today. I haven't tried this yet. Sorry, you're a little bit wonky. So this is the castor oil that I have got. I just got this from my nutritionist as you can see she's left me a little note on the side to tell me what to do here is my castor oil packing material and then we're just going oh it's really thick and then we're just going to add it to the cloth i'm really hoping two tablespoons is going to be enough i don't think it is okay so i've got myself set up i've literally just got my yoga mat on the floor with a towel i think i'm going to put the castor oil straight onto my stomach I've got shorts on <laughs> um, and then put the cloth on because if I was to put castor oil all over that cloth I'd have no castor oil left so what we're gonna do is pop a bit straight onto my stomach this on here I still feel like this isn't working I feel like this material needs to be soaking and <laughs> It's really not, like, I feel like this is actually gonna do at all, to be honest. Well, I'm not sure whether that worked. That was my first time doing it, and I'm definitely gonna do it again, but I think I'm gonna cut that cloth into, like, sections, so it's not so big and it's not so thick. So I'm gonna leave this here, and I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow when I go for acupuncture. Good morning and a very happy Thursday and I've got myself ready to go to the gym because this afternoon I'm going for acupuncture and tip number one if you're going for acupuncture don't plan very much for after it because you are honestly so relaxed and feeling so tired and sleepy that you just can't get very much done so this morning I am going to the gym to do a push session I haven't talked that much about sort of like what I do in terms of exercise and the gym. I did consider doing like an independent video on this. However, I just don't have the confidence to film in the gym. And if I'm going to sit here and tell you what I do in the gym, you're going to want to see it. And the thought of like taking my camera and filming myself, oof, it like gives me the ick. I'm just, I just don't feel confident enough to do it. But... I am currently doing four resistance training sessions a week. So glutes and hamstrings, push, which is like shoulders, chest, triceps. I'm also doing a quad and calf session and then pull, which is biceps and back. So they're the four sessions that I'm doing across the week. But anyway, I am going to stop waffling now. I'm gonna head off to the gym and I'll check back in with you after acupuncture. I am back from acupuncture. Always bring water with you. I don't know what it is with acupuncture, but it always makes me so, so thirsty. Anyway, today was really good. She treated me as if I am pre-ovulation. Because I mentioned I should have ovulated on Monday. I've been having some signs of ovulation, but we've not yet had that spike in temperature. So she basically treated me as if I was pre-ovulation. I had some of the acupuncture needles in my feet, in my hands, in obviously like my pelvis and a few in my legs as well and she said that some of them were to like stimulate my stomach some were to stimulate my you know my ovaries to ovulate and i had a few like in my head just to like help me relax so it was really good and she has suggested that i try seed cycling and i have a book and i can't remember it's called period power this is one of the first books that i read when i came off the pill and i was trying to sort out my cycle and in that book it talks about seed cycling so she told me to go back and read that chapter and to give that a go she said you've got nothing to lose you know it's just introducing different seeds at different points in your cycle to see whether that helps to regulate it so 
I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna go and sit outside whilst it's still nice. It's 20 degrees in this car. <laughs> and I'm gonna read that section on seed cycling. And then I might need to go and pick up some of the seeds that it suggests. But yeah, gonna do that. And I've booked myself in for acupuncture every two weeks now. So it's a little bit more consistent and hopefully it will be a little bit more effective as well. So anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna eat this before I go to the supermarket because as we know, we should never go to the supermarket hungry and i will speak to you guys probably tomorrow to wrap this little pcos endo what my life looks like video up <laughs> Hi guys, happy Friday. Just wanted to jump on and wrap this video up and say thank you so, so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this vlog style video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see some more because this journey is still ongoing and there's still gonna be some more stuff to update you on. So don't miss out. Hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one.